The world of clean beauty can be so confusing and there's so many different labels to consider, whether it's clean or organic or vegan or cruelty free. So in today's video, I'm breaking down the top six product qualifiers and exactly what they mean. Hey guys, it's Mona and in today's video, I want to break down how to understand the labels on a skincare or a beauty product because, you know, of course right now we are all becoming much more conscious of clean ingredients, you know, sustainable ingredients, but it's getting confusing because there's so many different marks of approval, I guess we'll call it, and sometimes we don't even really know which means what if they all mean the same thing. I've gotten this question a lot, so I want to break this down for you guys and help you understand, you know, what the me. So let's break down the top six that you're going to see on different beauty products right now. Organic, natural, clean, vegan, cruelty free, and sustainable. And believe it or not, these all actually have completely different meanings and one does not necessarily overlap with the other. I also want to thank Biosance for partnering with me on this video. This is the perfect partner for this video because they are a clean beauty brand and I'm going to get into one of my favorite products that they have. And you know, I've shared Biosance a lot in the past before, but all of the information in this video is really just about the different labels on any product you're going to find. One thing I want to say before I get into what all of these labels mean is that these laws actually haven't been changed since like 1938 because that's when the FDA made the law that beauty products and skincare products basically have to have their own self-regulation. So when you find a product, they decide if it's clean, if it's safe, and if it falls under any of these categories. So as you can imagine, most brands are going to want to tell you that their product is amazing and clean, even if it isn't. Of course, there's some good ones out there that are honest, but that's what this video is for. So I do want to talk a little bit about Biosense. If you guys have followed me for a while, I've definitely mentioned this brand before. They have some of my favorite products that I use all the time, but what I like about them is that they cover a lot of the categories we just talked about. Vegan, cruelty-free, sustainable, um, non-toxic, and they actually have a promise that they made. By 2025, they're promising to go zero waste. So their packaging is already recyclable, but there's a few things they still have to work on eliminating, which I think is really great and ethical because we can understand that this is kind of a new understanding for all of us. So we're all working to make our way to get better and do the best we can even in our homes and the products that we buy. This new product that I wanna talk about is basically an alternative to a regular vitamin C because vitamin C tends to be a little bit irritating to some people, especially if you're new to skincare. It's really good for brightening your skin. It can help lighten dark spots, but sometimes it can be a little bit harsh. So this one is combined with shiitake mushroom, which has never been done before. So I've always talked about vitamin C plus ferulic acid plus vitamin E. But that's like the combination holy grail that's kind of been known to brighten your skin. I like this as an alternative to a regular traditional vitamin C because the shiitake is gonna help tackle that pigment really quickly. So you're gonna get more of that immediate benefit. And then the vitamin C is gonna help tackle older pigment and hyperpigmentation and also just prevent any new ones from forming. Another thing about this one, the texture is the perfect serum texture. I'm super picky on this. I don't like a serum that's like a moisturizer lotion and I don't like when it's oily. This is like, oh, it's dreamy. So you're really gonna like the texture. You wanna use this in the morning. I've personally been using it morning and night, but morning time is great and then use it under your moisturizer and then of course always follow the sunscreen. So let's start with vegan. When you see a product that's labeled vegan, all this is telling you is that it contains no animal products in that product. So no animal products, no you know, lanolin, um, no, no milk. Sometimes there's lots of products that will have like sheep's milk, none of that. Now, when you see something that's cruelty free, this means that it wasn't tested on animals. So something that's cruelty free doesn't necessarily mean it's vegan and something that's vegan doesn't necessarily mean it's cruelty free. I find this a little strange because I feel like the term cruelty free would mean that they also don't use animal parts in their product, but it doesn't. So there's actually a couple different products that I've seen on different blogs and resources that fall under one category, but not the other. So depending on what your personal values are, what you believe in, you just can make sure you navigate it by knowing this information. Next, let's get into organic. Organic refers to the farming process. So when the ingredients were grown on a farm, were there pesticides, hormones, or toxins used? If not, then it's considered organic. But there are a few other things to consider here. There's some things that are naturally occurring, like let's say soil, water, rock, 
things that you can't grow that technically are organic because they don't have any toxins, but they legally can't be legal, labeled organic. The next thing is an organic certification is really expensive. So there's a lot of like, you know, even when you go to a farmer's market, you'd always ask, do you guys use pesticides? We're like pesticide free, but we don't have the organic label because they can't afford it. So maybe some smaller brands that are launching, you know, can't have that stamp of approval. This is where you have to get into the honor system and maybe see who's behind the brand and do a little bit of digging there. The next thing here to consider is that if a product says organic, it just has to mean that 95% of the ingredients are organic. So there's another 5% that don't have to be. Is this better than not being organic? Of course, that's always a better option, but that's almost like if you go to a restaurant and you're like, I want half the chicken organic and half not, you're still gonna get the other chemicals or possible toxins that come with it. So there's really no workaround for that, especially because some things can't really be labeled organic. And lastly, the one thing you don't want to fall for is if it says made with organic ingredients. And I know we're talking about skincare and beauty right now, but this is true for food too. All that means is that one or a few of the ingredients is organic. It does not mean that the majority is, so don't be fooled. It's just a way to kind of trick you into buying it. It's a good marketing hack and you know, to get you to spend more money. Now let's talk about natural. This is my least favorite one because it's so ambiguous and basically means nothing. The word natural just means that it comes from the earth. So it can come from any plant product, any like earth species or any animal, anything that's natural, you know, that's all it means. So really like you're getting such a wide variety of things there. This is also why I hate the term natural on food or even like, you know, natural flavors, which we know comes from the anal glands of beaver. I've thrown that out there a few times before. So that's all natural means. So even worse than natural is naturally derived because naturally derived just means that it started with something that came from earth or an animal, but then it could also be manipulated in a lab. So really naturally derived is kind of a synonym for synthetic because synthetic means that it was made in a lab, whether it was from the earth first and then you know changed in a lab or whether it was just created in a lab. So naturally derived and synthetic are basically the same thing. So don't fall for that. And I also wanna get into synthetic right now because synthetic is not always bad. And I think that we're tricked into spending more when we see natural and just automatically assume it's better. And also, I love everything as natural as possible when it comes to food, when it comes to ingredients, but you can't see that word when you're buying products and assume that, it, that it's better for you. That's all I'm trying to say here. If we were guaranteed that it actually is clean and good natural products, you know, the way we consider the word natural, most of the public, then it would be great, but technically it doesn't have to. So let's just get into synthetic. I know this isn't one of the six categories, but one thing I wanna say here is that synthetic is not always bad and natural is not always good. So let's think of some natural things that could be bad for you, like alcohol is naturally derived, um, you know, poison ivy or poison oak. If you go and take that and put it on your skin, that's not gonna be great. Even essential oils, as much as I love them in a diffuser, they can actually be really irritating to the skin and some people will use it as a fragrance alternative. I prefer no fragrance in my skincare. Like why irritate your skin if you don't need to? So natural, you know, could be good or bad. And then when it comes to synthetic, synthetic is not always bad. Just because it was created in a lab, I actually think that synthetic when it comes to skincare is a little bit more effective because you know, if you want to extract the antioxidant from a berry, you can really make it more potent in one serum versus like taking the berries and crushing them up and putting them on your face. Like, yes, that's more natural, but you're not gonna get that strong potency that you could from anything that you're extracting. So synthetic doesn't always mean bad. It does not mean that it has to have toxins or it's bad for you. So now let's get into what clean means. This is my favorite category, this might be my favorite word because I try to live as clean of a life as possible. Not 100%, no one does, but my theory is you do the best you can and that way when there's areas that you just want to live your life in, at least you're limiting your exposure as much as possible. So when it comes to clean, you know, the clean label, it basically means that there's no toxic chemicals that could be harmful to your health. So nothing in there that could harm your health, that could make you sick, that could irritate your skin. Another thing, again, to consider with clean is that there isn't really a legal regulation on it. So a lot of different brands can label themselves as clean, but it doesn't necessarily mean there are. And it is a very gray area and it's something we're, we're still really learning. 
I mean, the US alone bans, I think, 30 ingredients, which just changed. It used to be around 11, whereas um, Europe bans like 1,400. I'm gonna pop up the actual numbers here on the screen. So we don't ban that many in the US. We're definitely more lenient in terms of what we consider safe. And certain brands will even go further and you know tell you this is our blacklist of ingredients, like Biosant. So I partnered with in this video, I'm gonna share one of their products. They have a blacklist of like 2,000 ingredients. So they go above even like Europe and US standards. So you really have to go brand by brand here, which I know is more work on us, but right now, you know, that's where we are and hopefully we'll have more sources and I'm gonna share some great sources that you can also use. And lastly, let's talk about sustainable. So sustainable is referring to the health of the environment and the planet. So clean is kind of referring to our health and sustainable is the health of the planet. I do find that when brands are sustainable, they tend to be more conscious of everything and a lot of times they end up being clean for you as well. But technically when you're sustainable, it doesn't mean that it can't, you know, have ingredients that could harm you but be good for the environment. So. Sustainable uses like reusable packaging and they're recyclable and they make sure there's no deforestation and they're developed in far proximity from rainforest. So it's really all about the earth here. Okay, let's do a quick recap since I know that was a lot of information. So vegan is no animal products. Cruelty free is it's not tested on animals. Sustainable, it's good for the earth, good for the environment. Clean is good for our health, so no toxic ingredients. Organic is how it was farmed, so no pesticides, no hormones, no toxic ingredients in the farming process. And natural just means that it was derived from the earth, an animal or the earth anywhere. So that's the most ambiguous one. So when it comes to my standards, if I had to pick like one that I cared about the most, it would be clean because look, Clean and sustainable are great, but I want to make sure that I'm not putting anything on my body that's going to be harmful. Also, sometimes even if you, let's say you're like, oh, this doesn't irritate my skin, I'm completely fine. Just because you can't visibly see the irritation doesn't mean that it's not hurt, like harming your skin long term. So I think the more gentle we are and the more non-toxic ingredients we use, the better. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and it helped break down this world of different labels and clean beauty. If you wanna like learn more information and actually look up whatever product you have and ingredients, I'd highly recommend checking out the EWG. It's the Environmental Working Group. They have um, one section of their website that's called Skin Deep. They even have an app for this and you can literally look up ingredient by ingredient and it will tell you like the levels from like, you know, one to five of its toxicity and what it, you know, what studies have shown. And EWG is really the holy grail of like, if they say it's approved, you can trust it. That's why I love that Biosance is EWG verified. So I just, it's one less thing you have to think about. So check them out. It's a really good resource. If you guys want to check out Biosance, you can shop at biosance.com or sephora.com. I will put links below to both of those. And I will also put a link below to this product that I mentioned, their vitamin C serum. If you guys have any questions, please let me know below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you guys get notified whenever I have a new video. I'll see you next time.